Um, so uh, today I want to talk to you about how to, uh, originally it was how to disrupt SharePoint governance in your organisation and then I thought actually people might get a bit scared that you know the session was going to be about you know, chaos and causing mayhem in your organisation which obviously isn't necessarily a good thing. So I'll put positive in there just to kind of give you a little bit of a, a sense of comfort hopefully. Um, so my name's Ant Clay, uh, I work for Soul Sailor Consulting um, and we're a small micro consultancy very small actually, it's just me and I'm quite small as well, so extremely small um, micro consultancy. Um, and our focus is very much around enabling organisational value through, really through positively disrupting the way people work. So I like to uh, kind of come in and work with organisations and really try and change the status quo uh, and kind of change the way that people are working and hopefully help people to deliver value, uh, but mainly around you know, SharePoint and Yammer and kind of social business platforms. So that's me. Um, a lot of the content uh, in this uh, session is based around uh, a book I'm writing, which is the SharePoint Governance Manifesto. Uh, if you like the session or if you're interested in governance and you can get a discount and uh, download, download the ebook, it's about 80% complete. I still have some work to do on it, um, but uh, hopefully what's there already uh, kind of makes sense. Um, so uh, yeah, feel free to download that. So I want to talk about really you know, putting SharePoint governance into your organization, and I want to cover a few areas. First thing I want to talk about is you know, why current governance thinking, in, in kind of my opinion, in my experience, is a little bit flawed and where you know potentially we're, we're going wrong with our, our SharePoint governance currently in a, a lot of organizations. Then I'll talk about uh, an approach I've got to SharePoint governance which I call the seven waves of SharePoint governance and I go into a lot more detail about that in, in the book but we'll go through the seven kind of areas that I think are very appropriate for us to focus on when we're talking about SharePoint governance. And then lastly we'll, we'll talk about three major ways that uh, I work with organizations to embed governance in the organization. And it's great to have a, an a, a governance plan, it's great to have sort of ideas, but how do you actually embed that and actually make that real within your organization? So we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit of detail as well. So first thing I want to talk about or say is that you know, SharePoint as a platform rocks. SharePoint is a great technology. Yeah, I mean, you guys out there, can create some fantastic solutions with SharePoint. We can solve some really, 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 really tricky SharePoint problems, uh, business problems with SharePoint, and it's a brilliant, brilliant technology platform. Problem we've got is I go into a lot of organizations, and this is more like what the users are kind of feeling. So although SharePoint is a fantastic platform, we end up with users that are kind of sobbing in the corner and crying. That, how many of you have you know, had users, you know, it's okay, we won't share it with anybody, that, that have basically started sobbing in the corner, yeah? Absolutely, so some people have dared to put their hands up. Thank you for being brave enough. Um, but project failure, in, from my perspective in the SharePoint world, isn't about the, the actual SharePoint implementation failing. You know, I'm sure most of you have put SharePoint in and it's been a success from a project perspective. So, you know, Who's a project manager? Have we got project managers in the order? Yeah, so you've all gone, yes, SharePoint's been delivered. Yeah, we've ticked all the items on the Gantt chart or whatever, or all the user stories have been implemented. So from a project perspective, you're happy. Have we got any testers in the room? Yeah, some testers. Yep, so it's tested. The users have said, yep, SharePoint works. We're happy, go live. So SharePoint's gone live. So as a technology project, it's been successful. But what I find is the actual end users, whether that's six days, six weeks, six months later, don't feel that the project's been a success. Okay? They feel that you know, for whatever reason, you know, it could be the user experience isn't what they expected or, or what they want. Uh, it could be that it's not delivering the business value. Maybe you're not achieving the, the return on investment you anticipated. Or maybe it's just you know, a typical kind of you know, poor user adoption and you know, no one's really using the solution. So we put a technology platform in. That's been a success. But the business aren't getting the value that we kind of want from that. Yeah, how many people kind of agree with that? How many people sort of have, have that issue? Yeah. Lots of us, I'm sorry, me as well, you know, it happens. You know, we do our best to put SharePoint in, we do our best to kind of deliver the, deliver the goods, but we still end up with users that, that are unhappy. And I think 
Governance plays a huge role in helping us to get SharePoint to actually deliver the value that, that the users want. So I want to first of all do, uh, so I, I'm, I'm quite a visual person. I tend to, as you can see from the slides, not many words, lots of visual. So I want to kind of sketch out very briefly, hopefully this will work, um, what I think the problem is. So I think we have, um, we've got you guys, so I'll just draw one person, otherwise I'll be here all day. And yeah, it's a bad sketch, I apologize. You've, we've got these people, I probably need legs as well, don't they? Yeah, in, in your office, you may have, you know, some servers. Okay, most people don't have their servers in the roof, but yeah, it just makes the drawing easier. And it allows me to say, and they might be in the cloud as well, so it might be Office 365. So we've got our business. Um, we've probably got some sort of goal, some sort of vision that we're trying to achieve, yeah? I'll kind of draw that as a, as a sunset. I like sunsets, yeah? So there's our vision. Yeah, so we've got... SharePoint here, let's, uh, in fact, let's draw SharePoint here. I like the new logo, it's a lot easier to draw. <laughs> Something like that, yeah? So we as a business, yeah, and we as implementers are trying to get SharePoint, yeah, to deliver this vision, okay? It should be quite straightforward, yeah? Put a te technology in, put some governance in place, and hopefully achieve our vision and we'll have happy users. But what do you think gets in the way of that? What kind of stops us achieving this kind of fantastic solution with lots of value. Any? Yeah? I think it's quite easy to have a vision. Yeah. But without really clear objectives and also a culture yeah. within the organisation. But I think them two are the biggest. So, cool. There's yeah. Lots of other things, you know, support and training and testing and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, absolutely. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, there's some good ones. User adoption. User adoption, yeah. Anything else? Any other ideas? Yep, yep. I'll, I'll kind of, it, it is separate, absolutely, but will save me writing it. Um, anything else? What about money? Yeah, lack of money or resources? Yep. Resources. Yeah, so there's lots of things that could potentially stop us from achieving our goals. And I think governance is what we need to put in place to try and get around that. But my perspective from what I've seen in, in, in the industry is that Rather than this nice straight line to our vision, you know, we basically, we get hit by all of these different things, and I'm purposely making this a mess, yeah? We're trying to get over here to do our vision, but we end up focusing a lot of our time on trying to, you know, firefight, really, all of these other things that are getting in our way, okay? And the fact that we're doing all of this means that, really, we kind of get lost. So I think governance, to some extent, helps us to move away from all of the mess and the, the, the hassle and all the challenges that we've got and helps us get to our vision. So very much I feel that poor governance or lack of governance, yeah, ends up, we end up with a business that gets lost, yeah? How many people uh, have uh, governance already in place in their, in their organizations and think it's adequate? Nobody? Think it's really, really good. Don't have governance at all. Put your hand up if you don't have any governance at all. Okay. Put your hand up. Keep your hand up if you think you need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, phew. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so at least we've got a chance, yeah? We all know we need governance. That's good. And we, do we all feel that, you know, SharePoint, you know, we get lost in, in kind of trying to solve all of these different problems and never really get to, to what we're trying to do, yeah? Yeah, that's good. Um, so we, I think we've, what the problem is is that we're not focusing necessarily on the right things, or we're getting kind of sidetracked by a lot of other stuff. Um, and in a lot of organizations, we put in governance around the technology, around the server farms and that side of things. So we've got backup schedules and all of those things, hopefully. Yeah. Would that be right? Yeah. Do most people got technology governance in place? This quite often we can do it a little bit more, but you know, we've got something in place. I find certainly in my experience, most organizations have the technology governance you know, in place that's probably adequate. But that's not going to help, just that isn't going to help us. A lot of people talk about governance and talk about it in a way that it's kind of rules and processes. You know, if you follow this, you know, this set of rules, then your SharePoint implementation is going to be well governed and the users are going to be happy. Yeah, does anybody agree with that? Does anybody think putting in a load of rules is, is, is the answer? No? No? Okay. 
Nobody, hopefully nobody thinks that. So my view is that absolutely you need IT governance. Otherwise, we're, we're, we're going to be stuffed. I'll talk about that later. Absolutely, we do need some, some rules, but that's not going to solve our, our governance problems. If we just tell people what to do, you know, it's not going to be right. There isn't you know, a 10-step plan for governance that's going to work for all of your organizations and all of your SharePoint implementations, whatever you're trying to achieve. Yeah, so we need something more than that. The reason I kind of call it disruptive <laughs> governance is that I, I really do think that we need to kind of change the way that we think about the governance that we have. Yeah? Most of us will have some level of governance. Most of us kind of in the back of our minds know what we're trying to achieve around governance, I think. But it's very, very hard to actually put it in place and actually get the, the results we're trying to, to have. I, this is a, a, pay, a photograph of a page out of the, out of the book um, that I'm writing. But if you think about it, it says, look at the banks and look at your SharePoint projects you know, and take this book seriously or take governance seriously. The banks. Yeah, certainly in the UK, yeah, they had governance. Yeah, they had a stack of governance, I'm sure. If, is anybody working the financial services? Yeah, lots of governance. To potentially too much. Potentially the wrong sort of governance, yeah, because it still went a bit pear-shaped, didn't it? So you can have lots and lots of governance, but if it isn't the right sort of governance, you can still end up in a mess. So I think the challenge that we've got is that Governance, you know, if, we, if I asked all of you, you know, what you thought governance was, I'd probably get different answers from you all, which makes it really, really difficult for me to stand here and say, okay, you know, there's lots of people out there, there's lots of blog posts, there's lots of great ideas around what governance is, and to some extent, I think everybody's a little bit right and everybody's a little bit wrong as well. That's a bit harsh, yeah, saying people are wrong, but I think in a lot of cases, people focus very much on specific areas of governance information governance, IT governance, you know, specific things, where I think it's really a more holistic thing. It needs to cover a lot broader spectrum of, of areas. So another quick, we'll do another quick doodle. What, um, what areas do you think governance should, should cover? Yeah? The whole organization. The whole organization. OK, yeah. Roles and responsibilities, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, anyone else? Support and delivery. Support and delivery. Support and delivery. It's, it's almost a metadata, isn't it? Let's go, we, we almost, I, I, I just sprung into my mind there. Maybe I need to you know, get some metadata and define a, a term set for, meta, uh, for, for governance. Yeah, so training, that'd be a good thing. That'd be a, that's all, almost a blog post in the making, I think. You can do that one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's all of these different things. Anything else? So we've talked about IT already. Yeah, I, um, I mentioned information. What other, what other things should governance cover? SLEs, all SLEs, yeah, so the service delivery aspects, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, anything else? Communications. Communications. Good one. Yeah, so there's a lot of things, but we've all got different ideas. Other people, some people don't have any ideas because it is, you know, what is governance? What does it actually mean? Um, so it's very difficult, I think, to put a, a definition on governance. The, the best way I've found is taking it back to the Latin. So that's a picture of me and my dad's boat. I apologize, but it seemed, <laughs> seemed, seemed to be an appropriate picture. So the, the Latin definition is that governance means to steer. So it's not a strict process to follow in, the, in terms of the word. It's to steer your way. Okay? And I think that's a fantastic analogy for SharePoint governance. Yeah, when we implement SharePoint, we know where we are. We've got you know, a SharePoint, a technology platform. Hopefully, as we spoke about earlier, we've got a vision. We've got objectives. We know what we're trying to achieve. So we've got you know, a vision or a goal or a strategy. So we know where we're trying to get to. So governance in my opinion, is what helps steer us safely and hopefully fairly quickly towards our goal, towards our vision. Yeah? If we think about sailing, you know, when I go sailing, I, I launch the boat from, you know, from the harbour or from the sailing club or whatever. Uh, I have an idea of where I'm going to go. I'm going to sail around, uh, maybe do a race around some marks, and then I'm going to come back home to the same place. So I know where I've started. I know where I'm going. But if the wind changes direction, then I'll have to change course. 
If another boat gets in the way, then I might have to tack and go off in a different direction. You know, if uh, you know, the tide changes, that might you know, alter my course. But I still have a vision. I still have an, an aim or a destination that I'm going to. So things change. Yeah, so in the sailing sense, you know, the conditions, the weather, that changes and I change course, but I'm still getting to my goal. In the SharePoint world, things change. Talk about you know, culture, objectives, changing, training requirements, maybe budgets changing, all of these things change. And governance, rather than being a strict set of rules, should be something that can help facilitate us to get to that goal. So it needs to be flexible rather than rigid in my opinion. So we need something, and that's what I think governance is, that helps us to steer to our goal and to our vision, keeps us safe, and helps the business achieve its goals and its aims. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah? I'm not too crazy with my analogies then today. So before I get into the kind of the, what I think is a, a good holistic approach to SharePoint governance, I just want to kind of prefix it with a couple of things. The first thing is the, the Japanese words up there, I think it's Japanese, is, is shuhari, which is kind of a, a martial arts uh, term. Has anybody heard of that before? No? No? So shuhari is spelt, I think, is, it's going to go wrong now. I think it's spelt uh, shuhari, I think it is. Shu is, uh, it, this is a kind of like the journey that um, martial arts people kind of take going from complete novice to uh, a master. So Shu is where you basically just follow the rules and you, you do as you're told and you're kind of learning about it. Uh, and in a lot of cases, that's where we, we all are with SharePoint governance. Yeah, we're kind of trying to work out the best, uh, best approach. We're learning from different people uh, and, and getting different ideas. The, the ha element is where you basically you can do it. So you, you're, you're competent, you know what you're doing. You may feel that there's better ways of doing it, but you know, you're, you're pretty much confident in what you're doing. And then re is you're the master. So in effect, you then kind of take what you've learned and you evolve it into something else. So you add to it. And that's where I've kind of got to in my kind of approach to SharePoint governance. You know, it's built up on you know, work I used to do with, with, with different organizations I've worked with, the experiences I've had with different customers, and I've kind of developed that. So what I want to say before I go into kind of telling you my kind of uh, sort of vision of what SharePoint governance is, you know, everything is a remix. There's a great book. It's quite a short book by a guy called Austin Cleon. It's nothing to do with SharePoint. A lot of my inspiration and a lot of the things I think about for SharePoint actually come from non-SharePoint roots. And he basically says that you know, everything, is, you know, everything is copied and you should just take things and make, make, it, yourself, make it your own. So what I'd like to say is you know, we're going to go through this, what I call the seven, uh, seven waves of SharePoint governance in a second. Take that, you know, have a look, see if it fits in your organization, but then you know, make it your own. You know, it may not fit your organization, but try and use that as a basis for you know, what you're trying to achieve. So these are the seven waves, beautifully, uh, beautifully illustrated by, by, well, by me. They are waves, honestly. Uh, some of them look like waves. Some, I'm not sure what they look like, but it was my best attempt. <laughs> Took hours to do. So I have seven, seven areas that I focus on around SharePoint governance. And some of these will probably be familiar and some, some won't. Informa these are in no particular order. Information governance, so probably familiar to a lot of you. IT assurance, and I'll go into why I call it IT assurance, not IT governance, in, in a little while. Kaizen is another Japanese word. I do like Japanese words just because they're different and they're, they make things interesting. Kaizen basically means continuous improvement. Uh, change management and user adoption, business alignment, social business, and project governance. So they're the, 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 the waves of governance. They're the seven waves of governance that, that I feel give us a holistic view and a great kind of grounding to make sure governance is going to work in your organization. So when I talk to clients about this and, and other consultants as well, one of the first questions they say to me is, you know, does size matter? You know, if I'm a small organization in maybe, you know, in, in the private sector or a large public sector organization or a multinational, does the kind of size and the, the effort that you make on, on your SharePoint governance differ? My view is that I think you still need to use this, you, know, you still need the same approach. So whether you're a small organization, those, those areas of governance, I think, still apply. 
uh, or if you're a multinational global organization, they still apply. What will differ is potentially how much content you have to create. You know, what may differ is how you disseminate that out to, to, to the right audiences. But fundamentally, every business, every organization, I think, needs to have governance approached by those same ways. Yeah? The order will differ. You know, if you think about an a information management solution or a knowledge management solution, then actually the information governance side of things is probably going to be quite detailed. You know, for you know, Office 365, you know, SharePoint online solution, then the IT assurance is going to be fairly limited. Yeah, so the amount of emphasis that you have to focus may change, but you still need to kind of take into account all of those areas. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let's go through each of the each of the waves. He says as the clicker fails. There we go. So the first one that I want to talk about is business alignment. And just before I go into this, actually, what what I have, one, when I presented this uh, a while ago, somebody said to me that. Actually, this governance stuff that I'm talking about, isn't that just success factors for SharePoint projects? And I kind of thought about it and thought, governance is steering us to a vision. And actually, yes. So governance shouldn't be seen as this kind of you know, pain in the butt. It's not this thing that you know, we, we have to do to keep our users safe and the system up and running. Actually, it is around you know, good governance helps us be successful and deliver a solution that's right for the, for the business. So you can see this, you know, this whole governance session really as being SharePoint success factors. And if that makes it easier to you know, sell into your business and get you know, people engaged, then absolutely go for it. So business alignment is very much around um, aligning your project and the platform to what the business is trying to achieve. A lot of cases, uh, and I'll talk about this in my session tomorrow about requirements uh, gathering. In a lot of cases, I see organizations delivering what the business want yeah, what they say they want, without thinking really how that's going to affect the whole organization. So I'm a big believer in thinking more in terms of systems thinking and thinking about making sure that your SharePoint solution is helping the whole organization achieve its goals. It's no good as making, say, the finance department really, really effective if the rest of the organization's fallen to rack and ruin. Yeah, so we want to be trying to put SharePoint in place and govern it and drive it towards a solution that helps the whole business. And if we don't do that, you know, if we don't um, think about business alignment and make sure that every project, the platform, the, the features that we're switching on, all of that is aligned with what the business is trying to achieve, then we're going to end up with poor user adoption. We'll end up with a solution that's not really fit for purpose. Yeah, does that make sense? The second one is IT assurance. So this is kind of an easy one. And in my book, I've basically got drawn a post-it note that says, you know, page intentionally blank. Because most of you guys, certainly the, the, the more technical uh, guys out there, will you know, have some IT assurance in there. They'll have IT governance in place. You'll know what you're doing, and your platform's probably very well governed. But it's worth talking about briefly. It's, my, my, my view is that IT governance uh, and, uh, or IT assurance needs to be appropriate for what you're trying to achieve. So there's no point having you know, a massive amount of governance if all you've got is a couple of servers you know, in the server room. Or there's no point spending lots and lots of time and effort and money on IT governance when you know, basically you're, you're in the cloud. So it's around making sure the platform is aligned to what you're trying to achieve. So it's fit for purpose for, for you getting to your, your, your business vision. Um, and it's adequate to keep you know, basically the, the, the lights running and everything safe. So IT assurance is very much just about making sure that your infrastructure and the features you switch, the technical features you switch on, are you know, adequate for what you're trying to achieve, without over-engineering it or you know, cutting corners. So we won't dwell on that one. Project governance. So who's got project governance? Anybody got any project governance in place? Yeah. And if I say, what is your project governance? What would you say? It's more of a procedural thing more than anything, you know, that yeah. it's automatic, uh, you have to look in, or, you know, that sort of Absolutely. traditional... Absolutely. Tradition, yeah. Prince 2 based or yeah. something like that, yeah. Yeah. We're moving to that, you know Yay. Hooray. <laughs> yeah. But that's good. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people think that project governance, if they've got some sort of methodology, yes, we're doing Prince2, yes, we're doing Agile, we've got a Scrum Master, whatever, whatever you say, then you have project governance in place. 
my view is that it's a great start, but it's, that's not the be all and end all. Project governance, in my, in my opinion, is really about making sure that, yes, we have an appropriate method, and absolutely, as you rightly say, Agile is a, a, a probably a better way, I think, uh, for delivering SharePoint projects. But it's also about making sure that everything we do within whatever methodology we have is appropriate for what, for what we're trying to achieve, is aligned to the business goal and the business vision. There's no point creating, you know, as an example, a PID if really the business has no value from that PID. You know, we need to be managing our projects and aligning all the activities in the project plan for what we're trying to achieve, which is this vision and yeah, this outcome that we're trying to get, this value for the organization. So really, I think project governance is really about making sure that we have the right things in place to deliver the project, the right things in place to mitigate risk and to manage that project and, and to stay within budget and all those, all those things. But that's it. Yeah, Project governance is around making sure that we can achieve those goals and, and the vision that we've, we're setting out to achieve, nothing more. If we end up writing documents that nobody reads, then... Yeah, what, what's, what's the point in it? Yeah. So again, you know, the common theme I think around all of the governance stuff that I talk about is around us getting to our vision, yeah, and doing it in a kind of lean, effective way. And if we don't have project governance, what happens? Or if we don't have good project governance, what's going to happen? If we think about, you know, has anybody got any thoughts? If we don't have good project governance, what's going to happen? Any ideas? Disaster. Some projects do kind of manage, you know, if they're very straightforward, manage without any project management at all. You know, you, if you've got to de deliver a web part, you've got a developer who writes it, it gets deployed, done. You know, did you need to project manage that? Did you need a peer? Did you need a load of documentation? Yeah. Yeah. So you need project governance to control costs and, and understand where you are. And absolute, absolutely. Um, the other thing that I, th I think happens if you don't have you know, a very business-aligned project governance approach is that if things change, which, let's face it, they will always change in a project, you know, stakeholders will change their mind, requirements will change, the budget will go up or down, deadlines will change, all of those things. If you haven't got good governance around your project, then the kind of project gets in a mess because you don't know what to do. If you have good project governance, then when things change, you can steer with them. It's back to the sailing analogy. Something changes, you just change direction a bit. You may decide to go back home <laughs> and sail back to the harbour, you know, give up on the project. Yeah, because you, know, you, you need to because of what you're, what you're trying to achieve. So we need good project governance in order to steer us in the right direction. Information governance. Now, I'm sure if I ask who's got information governance in place, most people are going to put their hands up. Yeah? who's got information governance in their solutions. Yeah, and that can be anything from, you know, some sort of, you know, documentation talking about the metadata or anything. And I split information governance into two, uh, two areas. Information, uh, information uh, architecture, which is very much around the metadata, uh, you know, the taxonomy, content types, those sort of things. And then the other side of it is information management, which is more the process and the security, you know, workflow, things like that. So I look at information governance in those, in those two ways. And again, you know, it's a common theme, and I probably sound like I'm kind of you know, going on and on, but it's around putting the right things in place so that your solution delivers the vision that you've got. The amount of organizations I see that have you know, either not enough information governance or too much, and really it's just there because they think they need it. It's not helping them achieve their business goals. Yeah, so we need to be thinking when we're looking at governing our information, you know, why do we need the information in the first place? What is its purpose? How is it helping the business achieve its goals? And then put the governance in place around that to support you. Yeah? So it shouldn't be too onerous, but it should be very much aligned to what the business is trying to achieve. And I think that's what a lot of organisations miss. We, we put information governance in place because we think we have to, yeah, we put lots of security in, you know, lots of processes, lots of workflow. But the reality is that's stopping us getting to our goals and getting to our vision. So we need to be careful and apply the right level of information governance. And if we don't, then you know, we get duplication, we get people seeing content they shouldn't, people not being able to find things, the usual kind of user adoption nightmares that we have when, we, when we're dealing with a, an information solution. 
Fifth one, change management and user adoption. Who, put your hands up if you think that's something that needs governing, that that kind of fits within what we're talking about. Oh, excellent, that's good. Phew, I'll leave the slide in then. Absolutely. So uh, some people I talk to think, you know, change management is just this thing that you bolt on. You know, it's a set, you know, some activities that you do once you've deployed SharePoint. My view is that if you do that, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're just trying to push a big rock up a, up a very, very steep slope. Yeah, change management and user adoption needs to be addressed from the start of your project. And it's very important to, to have the right level of governance in place that helps you do that. One of the main reasons why I think this is so important is that you know, SharePoint projects are people projects. Yeah, I don't think every SharePoint project I've ever implemented has fundamentally changed the way an end user works. Yeah, we ask them to not use a file share now, we ask them to use SharePoint and put all their content there. That's fundamentally changing how they work. So we need to govern that and make sure that they understand why they're doing it, how that aligns with the business vision and goal that we've, we're trying to achieve, and making sure that they can do it and it makes sense and it's easy. Yeah, so yeah, getting, getting SharePoint projects and getting change management and user adoption as part of your uh, governance planning and your governance content is, is really key. It shouldn't be something separate. It should be something that's evolving sort of with every, every other part of your governance. And if we don't, I mean, and well, uh, the, the other aspect of it is that we're not just talking about, you know, a, a branded mouse mat and, you know, maybe some training and, and, a, and a launch. Yeah, that's not change management. I'm sure you'll all agree. Yeah, that's yeah has some value. Everybody likes a new mouse mat. Well, actually, most people don't have mouse mats now. I guess yeah, branded mug. You know, that's, that, there's value in that. You know, to get un people on board your your platform. What I'm talking about really is deeper things than that. You know, if we've got a you know, a social platform, then maybe we're talking about community management and really putting proper effort and proper governance around the user adoption and the ongoing change management. So really actually putting a proper emphasis on that. And if we don't, user adoption is going to fall through the roof, fall through the floor. You know, the amount of organizations I've seen that have not really considered change management and user adoption in, in their governance or, or at all, you, know, you see a big peak when they launch, you know, they get people using it, and then you know, within, within almost weeks, everyone's back to using file shares and email. Yeah, so it's an important part of your SharePoint governance to make sure that you have content that supports that, and I'll talk about that in, in a little while. Social business. So, so I kind of added this, not late in the slide deck, but my kind of, my thinking's evolved. I've put social business in there because I think whether your organization or whether your platform has anything to do with you know, SharePoint social features, I think we need to consider social and working in a social business kind of way for our governance. The main reason I think we need to do that, even if we just say, actually, we're not going to have any social features, and actually, as a business, we don't work in a social way, and, and you kind of explicitly say, right, we're not going to do it. You, I think you have to have had that conversation. Organizations I've talked to have said, ah, oh, social business, didn't think about the governance around that. And I said, well, you know, what about you know, rating? What about you know, comments? What about how you're working as a business? So ignoring the social features, you know, how are you working socially as a business? You know, more and more organizations are you know, to certainly talking and maybe doing business in a more social way. Who, who agrees, who sees their organization and, and their SharePoint platforms becoming kind of more social? Yeah? Quite a few of you. And I think you know, whatever you're doing, it's going to be you know, a part of SharePoint and a part of your businesses to some extent, you know, even ignoring SharePoint as a platform, it's going to become part of what you're, what you're doing. So we need to consider what we're doing, you know, both from a how you're working uh, in a social way and also in social features. And if we don't, you know, if we don't consider it, if we don't have governance content that addresses this kind of aspects, then you know, your, your platform may stagnate. When people say, you know, let, okay, we want to work more socially, you won't have any content, you won't have any guidance or way of steering them in, to do it in an appropriate way. Yeah, so people will, you know, you'll lose adoption. You won't be catering for, you know, I guess the, the kind of new ways of working that a lot of us are seeing come into our businesses. So the last wave is Kaizen or continuous improvement. So I think this is a, an important wave on its own, but I also think uh, really that 
you know, continuous improvement, uh, I guess, permeates through all of the waves of governance. And whatever we're doing around governance, we should be doing, doing things in small, iterative ways, kind of agile, um, and continuously improving what we're doing. Has, has anybody, you know, is everybody working in a kind of continuous improvement way who's either working that way or trying to work more? Yeah. Yeah. I think with SharePoint, it's, it's kind of, you know, because it's evolving, I talk about this a, a, a lot tomorrow in my requirement session, but I see SharePoint projects, if you put a SharePoint solution out there, almost immediately you're going to get feedback. People aren't going to like it or they're going to want changes. You know, SharePoint is not static. And one of the reasons it's not static is it's very much a, a collaborative, people-based solution. And we as people, we as businesses, are constantly evolving. So your SharePoint and your governance needs to be constantly evolving and continuously improving as well. So we need to be putting in place the mechanisms to allow the business to engage with you and talk and, um, and evolve the SharePoint platform on a, on a continual basis. And that should be part of the governance because the governance is steering us towards our vision. And if we don't do that, then you end up with you know, long release cycles. You end up people thinking that you as a, an IT team aren't really listening because you're not, uh, you're not um, implementing any feedback that they've got. You're not changing the system quick enough. So that you end up with you know, poor user adoption because really the system becomes stale. Yeah, it doesn't evolve quick enough. Yeah, does that make sense? So they are the seven waves. Has anybody got any questions sort of before we go into sort of how we can embed that? Anybody got any questions around the waves themselves? No? Somebody got a question while I have a drink? No? It's not so much of a question, man. It's more, I think most of these just have to be fit for purpose. Mm. You know, it's like a minimal user subset sort of approach. And, you know, if, if you're still, yeah, I don't want to go thousands of pages. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, absolutely. I, uh, when I talk to organisations and, and talk to them about embedding governance and doing governance, it's very much getting people to think about the vision and getting them towards that vision and reducing waste and absolutely fit for purpose and doing what you need to do to, you know, governance really, yeah, it's steering us to our, our vision, our goal, but it's also keeping the users safe. Yeah, it's stopping people posting things they shouldn't do. It's stopping people getting confused. It's people keeping people happy, getting them towards their vision, and stopping them doing any damage. That's it. And I think if you look at across all of those seven waves, you have IT, we're making sure the IT doesn't blow up. You know, continuous improvement, we're, we're, we're listening to user feedback. Uh, information governance, we're stopping people you know, doing damage with information. It's all around really getting to that goal you know, in, in, in the easiest and, and slickest way. Absolutely. That's a good question. Um, so the, the, the question was, yeah, how many uh, organisations have I been in where either IT or business are leading the governance uh, drive? Um, I would say 99%, and I'm being quite generous there, are IT-led. Um, the governance, uh, the business will have governance, but they will see it very much as being separate. They will see that as business governance. Uh, now, obviously, that is important, and that should form part of and help drive um, uh, your, your IT governance or your SharePoint governance. So um, I think really they should be joined up. You know, there, there definitely needs to be that communication between business and IT. And if the business has governance, then you need to reflect that in, in your IT governance as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, I, I'm finding most organisations they use, that I'm working with around this, they're, they're using this to then talk to the business and say, well, here's a load of areas around governance. What have you got that supports this or contradicts this or needs to be taken into account in these areas? So you get some information policies or compliance and stuff like that then feeding into it. So, you know, to some extent, absolutely, it would be great if it was business-led. But if we can use it as a tool to become more business-led or at least get the business involved in the SharePoint governance, then that's got to be better than nothing. Yeah? Okay, cool. Right, so let's move on to, to, to the last part of the deck. I want to talk about how we make it stick. So how do we get SharePoint governance to 
get embedded and to actually get used. So hands up, who thinks SharePoint governance is a document? Nobody thinks it's a document, one person. Got to be a document, you've got to write it down. Okay, if it's not a document, then what is it? It's a process. So where's that process stored? Is it? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I think it's a mixture of things. Yeah, absolutely. So it is, yeah, it is process, it's documents, it, it, it's a number of things, and we'll talk about that in a second. The way that I look at embedding SharePoint governance, or the kind of approach I've got, is, is threefold. So absolutely, there is, and rather than documents, there is content. Yeah. So whether it's in a wiki, whether it's a document, whether it's 500 documents, you know, there is some sort of governance content. I don't think we're ever going to get away from actually having to write something down. The other thing is governance boards. Yeah, so people to make decisions and help drive the governance. And then the last one is what I call in-place governance. So I'll go through these in a little bit more detail in a second. So they're the three kind of main areas. So when I'm talking to clients and we're working with them, we try and embed the governance using those three high-level sort of methods. But each one... You know, it has a shared vision. So we have a shared vision of what we're trying to do. So the governance boards, the in-place governance, and the governance content is all trying to achieve the same thing. Again, in a lot of organizations, you see the, the governance boards, especially the strategic ones, have a completely different agenda to the guys and the content that you've got around your SharePoint governance. Okay. So the first one, the easy one, to some extent, is your governance documentation and governance content. So who has, who has a, a governance document of some sort within their, for their SharePoint platform? For those of you who put your hands up, is it one document, five documents? Several, yeah. Yeah? Five, yeah. Okay, cool. And, and can I ask, uh, those five documents, are they covering different types of governance or...? Yeah, excellent. So they, they're different types of governance. Excellent. So uh, I try and use as many visuals within my governance content. So words get boring, and if you've got you know five documents or one document with 500 pages, your governance content needs to be kind of engaging because you actually want people to be able to use it. You want people to get value from that content. So we really need to think when we're writing our governance content about what the purpose is, you know, what it's trying to achieve, Again, only putting sort of content that you need in there, not sort of over-egging it and putting stuff there for the, for the sake of it, and making it easy to digest. If you think about the seven waves we've got, we've got quite diverse audiences potentially. Yeah, we've all, everybody involved in the SharePoint platform, I mean end users to stakeholders to the project team, all need to understand things around, say, the vision and those kind of things, because we all need to know which way we're being steered. But... A project manager may not be interested in the IT assurance content. Yeah, they may want to make sure it's there, but yeah, they're not going to be interested in yeah, how often a, a, you know, a server farm's backed up. Yeah, just like a strategic um, governance board isn't going to be particularly interested in IT assurance, isn't potentially going to be interested in project governance. As long as it's there, they're not going to read that. So we need to tailor the content so it can be consumed by different audiences. So I find a wiki is a great way of doing that because obviously you can start linking things together and you can almost take different stakeholders down a different journey. Yeah, so the SharePoint guys are absolutely probably going to need to you know, look at all the, co all the content. But project manager may be only interested in certain elements. And end user, even less. But you need to be able to present the governance in a way that, depending on the audience, they can consume it and they can read it. Yeah? What we don't want is governance to be this bloody great big document that's you know, gathering dust on a, on a shelf somewhere that nobody reads. Because yeah, it's a waste of time to create it. It doesn't evolve. It needs to you know, be this ongoing living set of content. So that's the, the governance content. And you know, we could probably do a whole day on what needs to be in there. But the way I tend to structure it is based on those seven waves. So I have sections for all of those areas. And then build into the detail as you go down into the, into the depths of things like IT assurance. Governance structures. So who, who's got a governance board in their organisation? One person. Must be more than you. Yeah. Yeah. 
how many typically how many governance boards do you typically have for SharePoint? Anybody? One? Just one? At the back there was it? Cool. So you're you're going to increase that. So typically, I'm finding that three is a good number. Yeah. So I'm my my experience at the moment is having three governance boards, actually three governance levels, should we say, not necessarily boards, is 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 really good. My view is if we have a, a strategic governance board, I think don't think we can get away with without having that. And their their role really is to do you know to do the big high level governance decisions you know governance decisions like you know let's use sharepoint for knowledge management now you know big changes you know we're going to you know tag all the content with a certain piece of metadata that might be you know if it's a big global change might be done at a strategic level below that i think you have a, a layer of operational governance now this could be you know at a country level if you've got a, a if you've got a, a multi country solution and you're a global organization, you may have operational governance boards across the, the countries or maybe across business areas if you're a large organization, or you just have one, you know, and they're to do with kind of operational governance. The more, not quite day to day, but it's a, the lower level decision making, the lower level decisions around governance. So maybe, you know, creating a new content type, you know, that might be you know, for an organization, that might be at that kind of operational level. It's not a big strategic decision. It doesn't, it's not going to scupper the business if we do that. But it may need a little bit more than just you know, the SharePoint team saying, yeah, just do it. And then at the bottom level, we have what I call the kind of day-to-day -day governance layer. And that's made up of, of multiple things. So I see that as being not necessarily a governance board itself, but the SharePoint team, um, People, uh, I'll, talk, I'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute, but the, the, the SharePoint team, maybe a center of excellence, uh, and maybe even specific key users in the business act as that day-to-day -day kind of governance, governance layer. So that, I think, covers you. You've got the strategic decisions, you've got the big decisions that need you know, some people to properly think about it, and you've got a layer of governance that is, you know, manages those day-to-day -day quick changes. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. The last thing that I wanted to talk about was the in-place governance. So in-place governance is, is related really to that sort of day-to-day -day governance side of things, but it's what mechanisms we can put in place to help steer the users, really, uh, and the business on a day-to-day -day basis around getting to their vision and keeping their content governed, well, keeping the, the solution governed. So this consists of a number of things. Um, the, the main thing really for the data, well, there's three areas really, I guess, of day-to-day -day governance. There's what I call signposting, which uh, in effect is um, links, content within your SharePoint solution that helps the user to be governed. Yeah, so I've seen organizations that have ha literally put a little signpost icon on every page that takes you to the governance content. You know, I've seen organizations have that, like maybe on a my site, where it takes you to a piece of content that says, you're my site, you can only upload, um, do, uh, upload you know, documents up to you know, 550 meg. You know, that's all the space you've got. The reason being X. Yeah? So you explain the governance to the user. So they're not asking you, you know, why can't I upload any more files? You know, it's there, it's in place. You know, you're steering, you're telling the user the reason for why you're doing things. So you can put and embed content within your SharePoint solution that helps steer the business. The other aspect is things like a SharePoint center of excellence. Who's, who's got or is thinking about implementing a, a center of excellence around SharePoint? Yeah, a few of you. Again, it's a great mechanism on a day-to-day -day basis for handling kind of governance and steering people in the right way. Yeah? How are we doing for time? Not too bad. So the other thing uh, I wanted to talk about actually on, on, on the governance place, I was going to sketch some things out, but I don't think we've, we've got time. Um, on top of the kind of you know, the, the, the governance content you've got, the hyperlinks, the in-place governance, and, and things like um, 
things like your centre of excellence. Other things you could con consider are things like gamification. That's a kind of a buzzword. I know that most, you know, SharePoint doesn't really support gamification particularly well. There's some great add-ons, but the, you know, if you think about governing, governing is around steering us towards our goal, towards, towards our vision. So if we can incentivize the users to stay on that path, yeah, and incentivize them to use SharePoint in the way that does get us to our goal, our vision, then that's got to be a good thing. So thinking about maybe some level of gamification might be a good way to help embed your governance into your organization. Is anybody using gamification as a kind of side, as part of their SharePoint? No. I think lots of people are talking about it, but yeah, I've, I've not seen anybody really do it very, very effectively yet. But I think it's coming. I think people will be. And I think yeah, for, for governance, it's quite a useful, uh, useful technique. The last thing around governance uh, I wanted to talk about is tumblers. So has anybody heard of the term tumbler? So Tumblr is, uh, I think it's a German word, but it's basically, it's basically the, the, the name of the person who gets people up and dancing and partying at a Jewish wedding. And it's called a Tumblr, T-U-M-M-E-L-E-R. And basically, that person, the role of that person is to get people to have fun at a wedding and have fun all night. Yeah, some of us may well have done that ourselves last night and tonight. <sighs> some of us have got enough energy. Um, but the role of a tumbler is yeah, to, to really to, to act and to behave in a way that the, the wedding party want, want them to. So in the SharePoint context, tumblers are people that use the system in a well-governed, well-mannered well way to achieve their goals. So they never you know, send attachments. They always send links. Yeah? They work in a way that you want to. Yeah, they don't break out of your governed solution. So Tumblr, again, is a good way of echoing and amplifying how you want people to use the solution without you having to put lots and lots of rules and processes in place. You know, they kind of guide and, and, and show the way. So I just wanted to recap then very, very briefly. Yeah, the seven areas I think that we should think about for governance are you know, information governance, managing that information correctly, making sure the infrastructure and the platform is fit for purpose, continuously improving the platform and your governance as well, managing change in your user adoption, and continually embedding that within the organization, aligning to the business, taking consideration of working more socially and social features, but also sort of you know, from, a, from a user perspective, working in a social way, and project governance. So they're the kind of seven, seven waves. And I'd, I'd like to give you all a bit of homework to do. I was going to say tomorrow, but you'll be here tomorrow, so for, for, for Thursday. What I'd like you to do is, uh, and again, this is kind of from, from, from the book, is I'd like you to have a look at your SharePoint platform and look at your governance, and then think about the seven waves and think about what governance content and processes and, th and things you have in place that align to those seven waves. Where are the gaps? Are those gaps now looking a bit scary and you feel you need to kind of plug them. But also then look at your governance and see whether it's actually helping you get to your goal and your vision. Or is it just kind of you know, bureaucracy and you know, actually just getting in the way. So I'd like you to all kind of have a think about that over the coming weeks. If you need any help, you know, you know where I am. Um, but uh, really that's, that's it for my session. Um, thank you very much for uh, you know, your participation and your attention and your time. Um, as I say, if you want to learn more about my approach to SharePoint governance, you can uh, download the, the book. And really, it's, uh, any questions? <laughs>